This is Brent coming at you with another exercise for the rectus capitis anterior longus coli and longus capitis, commonly known as our deep cervical flexors. These muscles have a propensity to get underactive and weak in cervical dysfunction, as well as play a role in upper body dysfunction. Now we've done a couple previous videos where we did stabilization exercises and then stabilization with integration exercises. This exercise is almost a regression from those two videos. This is almost pure isolated activation for the deep cervical flexors. So I'm gonna have my friend Yvette come out. You'll notice she's got a little bit of resistive band tape here. What Yvette is gonna do is she's gonna wrap this around the back of her neck, right, because we wanna resist retraction, and then she's gonna push out and hold on to this mirror. So why don't you go ahead and show them that. Now let's talk about some of the clever things about this exercise. So as soon as she pushed out, I can now cue protraction and depression of her scapula, so now her scapula is stabilized. I would say that this part right here is where so much deep cervical flexor activation exercise gets totally messed up. This is a lot where the compensation happens. So by being able to stabilize her shoulder girdle, I just made this exercise a whole lot better. Now the second point is, is I have her holding onto a mirror, so now she's got visual feedback on what this should look like, which if you have somebody with cervical dysfunction, this'll be extremely important because they're gonna have that tendency to like maybe tilt to one side or maybe rotate a little bit as they're trying to pull back and you want them to be able to focus on giving you the best form possible. So now what is the exercise? Well, the exercise is actually fairly simple. All you're gonna do is have your patient, right, or client, go ahead and protract, depress as I talked about, make sure their glutes are tight so you got them in good kinetic chain checkpoint alignment here, and then have them go into a forward head tilt, like they're kind of pushing their chin towards the mirror. And then all you're gonna do is cue a chin tuck and retraction, making sure you pay very careful attention to getting as much out of that retraction as you possibly can. Chances are if they have cervical dysfunction or upper body dysfunction, it's not gonna be the beginning part of that movement that's hard at all. It's gonna be those last few degrees that get them back to neutral position or maybe even beyond neutral where you're gonna need the most strengthening. Let's go ahead and try that again. Good, and back. And of course I would use the same acute variables that I use for all my isolated activation exercises. I'd be doing 12 to 20 slow repetitions, either a 4-2-2 or a 2-4-2 count, one to three sets. I have been experimenting with this exercise a little bit. One thing you can do is you can kind of move the band so that more of your resistance is on the lower cervical spine, mid cervical spine, or upper cervical spine. So let me show you guys how that would work if I thought most of her issue was in the lower cervical spine and I really wanted to work on the last few degrees of retraction, I might bring this down a little bit lower, giving her a little bit more tactile stimulation there, and then have her try to tuck. And this might be harder, it might be easier, it might just be different. It's definitely worth experimenting with. You can definitely get into a little bit of a mind trip, a little bit of a human movement science geek out thinking what segmental resistance would do to the cervical spine. All right, and then I can go with the upper cervical segments if I thought where that was where most of the problem lied. So let's say she has that atlanto-occipital or C1, C2 dysfunction, maybe C2, C3. Good, and she's retracting against that. The other thing that does is you guys can experiment a little bit with arm position too, right? We don't want to just be stable in this neutral kind of position at 90 degrees of shoulder flexion, but maybe you do want to do a little bit up here and see if she can still maintain that good scapular retract or scapular protraction and depression. Maybe you want to do it a little lower and see if she can still maintain that shoulder girdle stability. How does that feel? Feel good? Mm -hmm. And then of course, if you guys got this right, you've done all your mobility work beforehand, you have them go ahead and stop the exercise, and you can check their posture again and see if they're standing up a little bit straighter. So there you guys go, isolated activation for the deep cervical flexors using just a little bit of resistive band tape and a mirror. I hope you guys get great results.